people are choosing <laughs> um, and kind of how they're deciding how they're going to allocate what resources and stuff. Um, and then we're going to go into starting to look at our Spanish phrases of the week to get more comfortable with Spanish before brigade, as well as introducing Duolingo for people who already are signed up for that. And then we'll take a look at some fundraisers and upcoming activities and stuff. Maybe uses the holistic model to choose the communities that are receiving brigade, as well as those as how those brigades are assigned. Um, and this is called the holistic process. And the idea is that by following these six steps, so we have the community identification, community partnership and needs assessment, baseline community data, program implementation, holistic model, um, staff follow-up, and sustainable transition from communities. And the idea is by following these different steps, there's gonna be a greater chance that the community is reaching the level of sustainability um, where they become empowered. And I'm going to go through these, these six steps in a little bit more detail. Um, so the first step is community identification. And this is really important to know that, um, sorry, I lost my, um, it's really, sorry guys. Um, so it's really important to know with this step um, is that it's, a community, it's done in partnership with the communities rather than being done for the communities. Um, this just is a, increases the chance of them having more ownership with this project rather than just kind of, oh, this is being handed to us. We, we can just kind of let them do the work. Um, receiving a brigade from GB requires the community to buy into this process as well, which also is gonna help to create ownership. Um, and typically how GB finds out about these communities is it's usually either GB themselves approaching these communities or they're hearing about these communities wanting a brigade through word of mouth. Um, and so with this step, GB is what GB refers to as the rapid needs assessment. This is where they team up with the communities to work with them to determine a couple of things with the community, but most more, most importantly, that's gonna be if the community's needs are aligning with the programs that GP offers, as well as if this is a safe place to send a brigade, so are there roads that buses can bring brigades into? Is there somewhere safe that we can set up a clinic or a meeting spot for a business brigade or whatever kind of, um, yeah. So obviously the safety of volunteers is really important to GP and so that's taken into account before they make a decision whether or not they're gonna send a brigade into this area. Um, and then after that, before they GB sends in their first brigade to the community, they're going to complete what's called a baseline survey. The survey is facilitated by training the local staff members as well as going around to each individual household so that everyone in the community has a say. And then this provides GB with their baseline for um, information such as like healthcare, economics, and sanitation, what is like currently actually in place in the community before they even go in. All right, and then this is us. Um, so the first brigade that's gonna come into a community is gonna be a medical brigade. And this is gives um, GB a better idea of what illnesses and ailments this community might be struggling with. And then that can guide them into what brigade they're gonna send next. So example of this would be if you're seeing a community with a lot of chronic asthma or just like chronic breathing conditions, they're gonna be more likely to send in something like a public health brigade that's gonna be, um, building eco stoves to properly vent out for cooking. All right, and then step five is staff follow-up. So the, obviously when we bring a brigade into community, they're not just gonna bring the brigade in once and then just leave them. That obviously wouldn't be sustainable. So their um, GB staff is going to check in periodically with the community committees that they've put in place, such as their community bank leaders, sanitation communities and community health workers, which I'm gonna get into in the next slide, but this is gonna, checking in with them is gonna ensure that these programs are um, functioning effectively and still being used. All right. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the community health workers, um, community health worker program. And so one of the major barriers for accessible healthcare in Honduras is understaffed healthcare in rural communities. People just cannot actually get themselves to some kind of healthcare practitioner. 
So this is the inspiration for our community health worker program. It allows the community members to have access to someone within their community that they can go to for things like first aid and wound care, treatment of um, tropical diseases, um, STD transmission and prevention, family planning, nutrition and hygiene. Um, so they have someone right in their community that they can go to do this stuff. Another benefit for having choosing these people out right out of the communities is that they're local. They're your neighbors, your teacher, your whoever, like the people that you're comfortable going to. So there's not just some random stranger that's moved into your community and is like, come tell me all of your deep, dark secrets. No, it's someone that you're used to. All right. And um, Judy also has what's called the patient referral program. So when patient comes into a medical brigade and they are diagnosed with a more severe health problem that can't actually be treated within the local clinic, they're gonna be referred to the local major medical center. So whether that be a clinic or a hospital or something for the more advanced treatment, um, GB provides the finance, well, provide financial assistance for their first treatment as well as helping them get to their appointment. Um, and the funding for these programs is coming from either just a general donation pool or groups can choose to donate to specific individuals, which I believe we have done in the past. Yeah. I think um, I tried to find a slide on it, but I could not. All right. And then finally, the last step for the holistic process is called sustainable transition. And the idea is that once a community reaches the goals that they laid out with GB at the start of their whole holistic process, GB is going to slowly start to transition themselves out of the community and leave them in that empowered state, which is the ultimate goal. Um, obviously, leaving the community isn't just stopping everything and funding, leaving them to fend for themselves. GB will still follow up with communities to ensure that things are running smoothly and provide any guidance for them if they run into any issues. Um, and also, they will, if you're in an area where it's impossible to get them to any kind of local clinic, GB still will sometimes run a medical and a dental brigade back into those every, I think it was three to six months. So people can still have follow up with medication and stuff. Yes, three to six months on that slide, nice. All right. All right, um, does anyone have any questions about that? I kind of went through it a little bit fast, but it's all, all and these slides are gonna be posted as well if you, want to look back through and have questions later. All right, so now I'm going to introduce our Spanish phrases of the week. So on Brigade, um, you're going to be communicating with community members, and it's going to be done either through Spanish yourself or through a translator. Um, but so because of this, I thought that I would start by giving you guys like a phrase a week that I think you'll be useful on Brigade. I'm going to start with things like, um, what is your name and stuff and like, where is the bathroom? Because as funny as it is, you're gonna you're gonna want to know how to say that. Um, and then when we get closer to brigade, I'll start using more <laughs> brigade specific words um, as well. I would also encourage anyone if you'd like to download Duolingo, and I added a couple of our usernames onto the board. If you want to friend anyone and see if we can get a little comp comp ah, competition going, um, motivate each other for the learning Spanish. But yeah. So we're, we have our, um, our first phrase of the week this week is going to be, what is your name? So there's a couple of ways to say it. Um, and as I have it set, so the formal ones are you, anyone that you want to address with respect, anyone that you don't really know necessarily, um, you would want to use one of those first. So it would be something like, como se llama or cuál es su nombre. And then the, so the informal version of that is going to be como te llama, which is, it means the same thing that, Tay just makes it informal. I also don't speak Spanish, so if anyone speaks Spanish and wants to do this or wants to tell me that I'm saying something wrong, please tell me. Thanks. <laughs> I like you. What's your name? Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right. You want me to do it? No, yeah, if you want me to, I'm here to do it. Go for it. Okay. Uh... Well, first of all, like, there's not too much difference between, like, como se llama, como te llama. Like, we don't really pay much attention, at least in Mexico or in Latin people, but sure, it's nice to address, like, if you're talking with a doctor, like, if you come there, yeah, why not? But, uh, yeah, so once more, guys, okay, so, como se llama. 
Beautiful. I love that. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, Lois is there. One more, one more. Second one. Como te llamas? Como te llamas? Mm, nice. I think I should study Spanish here. <laughs> Make a living out of it. Um, then, uh, well, of course, um, the second the second phrase, they're just asking for your name. I mean, this is, you probably heard it before. Like, I'm sure that like, you have a lot of international students in your high school from Mexico or like Spain or so. So they're just asking, uh, they're wondering what's your name. So uh, the formal way to say it is, uh, ¿Cuál es su nombre? Well, that is soup. No, okay. I am it. Um, yeah, like the formal, um, you just change the soup for two. So, cual es tu nombre? Cual es tu nombre? <laughs> Bravo. Now, guys, give your hair a clap because that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. It's just hard with the math. It is. It's that, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm blaming that's it. I'm blaming the math. I'm going to blame the math for everything from now on. <laughs> All right. All right. And so for some of our upcoming events, um, Saturday, we have <laughs> Saturday, we have um, a bottle drive. And sign up for that is on our link. Yes. Um, the logo design concept test, the designs for that are due on November 9th. So if you have a design that you want printed on a hoodie or t-shirt or what did you just said you're actually doing? A piece of clothing. A piece of clothing, thank you. <laughs> All right, and then we also coming up in a couple of weeks have our mustard seed Christmas dinner on Sunday, November 21st and sign up for that is also on our link tree. Everything, and is, on link everything tree. is on our link tree. Sounds great. And oh, today is also the last day to submit pumpkins. If you have, if you have a pumpkin that you would like, um, in our contest. All right. Wait, so, how do you say the third seat? How are you going to spell? Oh, um, yeah. 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 To be your family at Christmas, they provide food for you. And so on the 21st, uh, Sunday, it's been happening, and they're just calling for as many volunteers as can come. There's a variety of tasks. You might be just like setting up the event, or actually serving drinks, or serving food, or cleaning up after the Times throughout the whole day. So, really, any time you give on that day would be awesome. Are you still working? Um, so, on our Instagram page, do you have Instagram? Okay, so up in the link in the bio, there's the little link tree, and then it should be the first or second link on there. Yeah, so I think it's the fourth. <laughs> okay, it's yeah, the fourth. It's in that list. It's so much called the mustard tree. Yeah, it'll it's say mustard tree sign up. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, All right. And then we also have an upcoming deadline. So um, November 12th is our deadline to sign up on Empowered and pay the $155 deposit if you would like to come with us on Brigade. Um, there's instructions in the next two slides for setting up on Empowered on your own. Um, yeah, those are the, those are the payment options. Um, there is a service charge with the credit card. I don't know what the percentage is off the top of my head. I think it's three and a half. Okay, yeah, three and a half. <laughs> so yeah, if you do want to pay on Empowered, it's a couple. Do we know what the turn time is if you do want to pay on Empowered? It's a couple more days. Yeah. The same day. Same day? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, November 12th is the deadline for that. And then these, these last two slides, I will leave up here and you can um, either look on the slide or I can go through them for a little bit for people. Okay, yeah. Questions. This is actually, yeah. Um, all right. That is actually all I have for you guys today. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious, what's the process of getting the 